hello my lovely people good morning good afternoon good evening good night welcome to my youtube channel my name is jen this is the first time that you are seeing me thank you so much for stopping by my return subscribers i love you thank you thank you from my heart i love you i love you oh god god what did i do to deserve this my lovely people please if you have not subscribed subscribe to my channel put on your notification bell so when i put a video you will get it thank you so much so this video is let me give you guys the video eh the video that is breaking up internet the video the first uh, interview that peter will be had in channel it, no not in channels it's a uh, arise news that he had uh, in arise news that is breaking the internet but before i tell you that hmm? Peter Obi came out because of uh, Ahmed Bolatinubu's falling. And he said that, uh, and I mean, and, and say, hey, anybody can fall or that they wish him well. Mm. Mm. Hey, internet obedience dragged the hell out of me. I thought you guys are saying that uh, Peter Obi should control. Uh, the obedient or control the internet obedient drag the hell out of him for wishing him well <laughs> obedient is a oh god <coughs> oh god stop it who call you <laughs> who call you i don't have the the whole thing because you can you guys can see that i'm driving to read it out for you eh but that particular tweet that he tweeted that he wish him well on his fall hmm? did he forgot uh the people say eh you are wishing him well for his fall the naira fell from wherever it is and you are wishing him well he is falling just like every other person he's falling like insecurity he's falling <laughs> Hey, Jesus. He's falling like insecurity. He's falling like Naira. He's falling like a, a bag of rice. He, everything, he's, that is everything. He's just falling like uh, <clears throat> his government. His government is a failure, so he fell like his government. So please, ah, if you see internet, eh, I'm like, can you guys leave Obi alone? All he did was just to say, Ogasa. Oh, Sorry, yo, me, I'm not part of the... <laughs> <coughs> me, I'm not part of the people that is wishing you bad. I'm very, very sorry that I wish you well. I, in short, I wish you well. We should not be using whatever, whatever that happened to be trolling or whatever. The people say, eh? Who told you to come out and say? Who are you to come and, and bully us, to tell us who to... Who to talk to or who not to talk to? I beg, stop it! Oh, why I break down? We don't want to hear your mouth. Oh, you are too. Uh, one of the ones that that made me laugh so hard. They said, "Excuse me, sir. You are that is you are too fine uh, uh, for a fault. Eh? Some sometimes make you get angry a little bit. Nobody go beat you if you get. <laughs> Nobody go beat you, sir. Eh?" The ass I'm about to show you, can you say, hey, don't worry. Now, our father now, when we get old, people go respect us. People say, who asks you whether people will respect us or not? The man who talks say, you know, you know, fit to be present. They ask you, say, he's your father. And they ask you about everything they ask you, you are being nice. You know, fit to get angry for what? That is the part that killed me. You know, fit to get angry for once and get angry and said, all oh, these people, can you guys leave me the F alone? Can you just... <laughs> <coughs> oh, my God. <coughs> can you guys just imagine Peter be saying, can you guys just leave me the F alone? Oh! People go... <laughs> people go quiet. <coughs> <coughs> or come and yell one day like Aisha. I, like Aisha, Aisha don't give an F who you are. Aisha will curse the living hell out of you. Or just come out one day. No, just imagine it in your head. Peter uh, Pit B just come out and say, Excuse ah, the, uh, let me tell you another one that made them go crazy. He calls him the president. Hey! Hey, whoa! They said, oh, God, who, you call 
call him president? You call the INEC illegitimate president president? Oh my God! You mean he stole your mandate and you are calling him president? Oh my God! So people that are saying, uh, Peter Obi, why you not say anything when uh, uh, the obedience were dragging uh, 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 Shoinka? No, Shoinka said he didn't say anything. Okay, now that they are dragging him, what are you guys going to say? They are dragging him that I know now, eh? He will not put any tweet anytime soon. <laughs> because people don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear him say nothing. They say, sir, you are too good for a fault. We can stand your goodness. <laughs> Carry your goodness. Go pack it one place. Go pack it one place. We don't want to hear it. But remember, that's not why we are here. Eh? He put this video. Eh? Internet is shaking like this. Internet is buzzing. I say Peter Obi. Peter Obi is borrowing them sense here. They know they get them. They don't get it. So my people, watch this video that is making inter internet shake. As always, every time Peter Obi drop a message. Eh? The whole Nigeria will shake. The whole internet will shake. I made the bulletin will shake and will shake like this. Everybody will shake. Hmm? To the extent that I now know. I now know go say, not be only I made the bulletin fall. Not be only him. So if he fall on car, who cares whether he fall or not? Not be Biden fall. No, be so 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 president. Started pulling all the people. <coughs> he started pulling all the people that have failed, uh, that that's walking and something tripped them and they fall. But he forgot that they that this people's country that is walking. He forgot. They, he forgot that. So Ananugo is so angry that he's bringing all the people that fell. I'm like. Okay, Ananu, go go and sit down. Just watch this um, this arise news. Maybe you can get some more sense from there because Peter Obi is not missing words. P Peter will be even. Make I know continue to analyze. Make I just leave you guys to watch it yourself. Enjoy the video and share the video and borrow sense to people that don't want to get sense. It's not just grabbing and snatching and running away with it. You think that's the only way you can get? Uh, you can no, no, they do like that. But watch and subscribe if you have not. From me to you guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank bye -bye. you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Mr. Charles. And happy Democracy Day. Thank you. You've been away from television for a while. You've been making very few comments about a lot of things that have been happening. Why is that? Well, just following up, I'm making sure that other people make the comments and I listen because part of leadership is also listening and learning. And that's what has been happening. I've also been contributing a bit of mine. Indeed. This week, of course, uh, Democracy Day um, is being marked this week here in Nigeria. How concerned are you that democracy in this country remains extremely fragile and some would say in peril after a quarter of a century? Well, for me, that was part of my comments today because I said I tweeted today. The question is, the fundamental question to ask today is to ask, are we truly democratic? Unexamined life is all we're living. You must at any step try to examine what we are doing. After 25 years of experimenting and trying to be a democratic country, it is now time to ask questions. Are we truly democratic? And you start by defining what is supposed to be. Democracy is supposed to be government of the people, by the people, for the people. So the fundamental question, is this government of the people? Is it by the people? And is it for the people? Beneath this is supposed to be a benefit for the people, which is not there today absence of which have led to 
leadership failure over the years that brought massive corruption, hunger, sufferings, all of pain, insecurity, everything. So you would, the opposite is what we've experienced. What we should actually be celebrating is a some sort of state capture where those who have captured it have cornered all the benefits that are meant for the people. All the people are supposed to see in terms of good education, good health, and pulling them out of poverty have been cornered by the few that have captured the system. And they continue at the suffering and the expense of all. And it, the list is endless. You can go there and see the measure of democracy. We are 4.23, which shows we're low. You look at the hunger index, we are 109 over 124 countries measured, which shows we're low. You look at corruption index, we're 145 over 180 countries, which shows we're low. You look at law and order, which is supposed to be an intangible asset that drives democracy. We're very low. We're 120 over countries measured. So you could see we're low in every facet. If you compare even the electoral process that brings our leaders into office, again, we're very low. Let's just take the recent three elections in comparable countries of South Africa, India, Mexico. In all these three countries, first is that over 60% of registered voters participated in voting. Pulling boots opened over 80% opened on time and closed on time without incidents no ballot snatching, no this and everything. And results were transmitted electronically without any hitches, no glitches, nothing. Well, there was a slight hitch in the South African transmission, no. but, but not to the degree. No, that, it didn't that we affect the result because every party yeah. accepted it. Mm. It was a very minor thing. I watched it sitting down in my own sitting room from beginning to the end. Mm. India that was supposed to have over, the people that voted in India are three times the Nigerian population. Yet you could see it. The election was accepted. In our own case, less than 25% of the voters participated. And indeed, those who came out, many of them were prevented from Thank those. you. Are the pulling boots do not open on time, close late, mm. close early, with all sorts of fraud and everything. And when you think about it, in these countries that I mentioned, these were carried out by ordinary citizens. In our own case, despite all this fraud, glitches, everything, it was being executed by professors. So there must be something we need to re-examine and ask ourselves question. How do we get it right for our children, for the future generation? Mm. We can't continue on this path. So how do we get it right? By doing it rightly. The government can stamp and say, I recall late President Yaradua, who's admitted that the process that brought him to office is faulty. And he was bent on changing it and putting the right steps to do that, so do you think which was, was followed up by Jonathan right. and participated in an election where for the first time the ruling party and the president lost the election. Just like you can see in the way I've just told you, mm. the ANC in South Africa had a reduced position. In India, the same thing happened. They accepted it. Mm. 
So do, do you think that the reason for this problem that you've identified is politicians in power consciously refusing to give those institutions the latitude to operate? Exactly. And making sure it happens. Institutions must be respected by those in office. They must make sure for the future of the society, for the future of our children, a leader or those who are in leadership must do things rightly. So in that regard, when you look at the highest office in this country, an office that you aspire to, what do you see? Do you see an individual that respects or does not respect the rule of law and who through his actions and those of his deputies and possibly ruling party supports or does not support the fabric of this country's democracy? You can, you, Charles, I leave this, you can ask ordinary Nigerians. Well, I'm asking you. I don't think they do. No. They don't. That's why it's happening. If they do, it won't happen. You, you do recognize, though, that a lot of the people who are in power have inherited decades of rot, and you can't wave a magic wand and all that rot will disappear. Charles, I don't like discussing this today. No matter where you start, if you mean well, you can start correcting them. The role of a leader is not to remind people of the past or mention the past or think about the past. Your role is to show the past by doing things that are right. Change starts from you. By you, if you decide to walk the right path, that's how it starts. You can decide, okay, yesterday it was wrong. That's even part of why we hired you. Because it was wrong yesterday, we didn't hire you to remind us or start giving us the excuse, but to show the solution and how best to do it. That is leadership. So in that respect, after 25 years of unbroken democracy, which Nigeria is marking this week, are we walking on the edge of a razor blade, as someone put it? Are you pessimistic Complete, or optimistic? Very, very pessimistic. We're actually walking in the right direction. In the right direction? In the wrong direction. In the sorry. wrong direction. We're actually walking in the wrong direction. Right. Very wrong direction. And we need to change it and work in the right direction. And it has to start from the number one person. Well, let's assess that walking in the right direction or wrong direction and that number one person. Let's turn to President Tinubu's first year anniversary. After one year in office, do you think he has displayed the strength and the ability to tackle Nigeria's many problems? Are you impressed with mega projects, for example, like the Lagos Calabar Highway? Well, you know, I've never made comments about one year in office. The reason why is simple. I would say that President Tinibu have kept to his campaign promises. Throughout this campaign, the campaign, he consistently maintained that he will continue from where Buhari stopped. And that is done very well. I would say excellent. I'll give him an excellent pass mark. And it's very simple. It's just, dollar was 460, is now 1005. Fuel was 238, is now about 700. Diesel was 844, is now 1415. A bag of rice is 30, 35,000, is now about 80. A bag of beans was similar, 30, 35, is now about 90. Gary was 27, 28, is now 49. 50. 
a tuba of yam was about 2,007 to 3,000. Nine is about 10,000. Tomato basket is about 40,000. That is over 150,000. Electricity is 66 kilowatts, is now over 200. You can go on and on. Our debt, even bread, which is a basic thing other countries have subsided, like Egypt, bread, smaller, medium bread was 450 naira. It's not 900 naira. The big one is 900, it's 1,005. Our debt, like I mentioned, was 87. By end of last year, it was actually 97. The highest we've done within that short period, nine is over one, about over 100 trillion. In fact, this year alone, the government through the Central Bank of Nigeria have issued and taken from the system borrowing of over 16 trillion naira. You can imagine the interest at almost 20 percent is about 3.2 trillion after 12 months. At that last year, in a period of nine months, we spent about 5.7 trillion servicing as debt interest on our payment. So add that. So overall, you've done well. Let's even go back to the overall of the economy. By the time it took over last year, we were still the biggest economy in Africa with 477 billion dollars as our GDP, followed by South Africa, Egypt, Algeria, and Morocco. Today, we are number four. South Africa is number one now, I think about 373 billion dollars. Egypt is second, 347 billion dollars, followed by Algeria, 266. And we are now 252 billion GDP economy. It's even worse when you go to our per capita. We are, not, we are actually one quarter of per capita of the least of these nations that I mentioned. South Africa is over 6,000 per capita. Egypt is 4,000 plus. So is Algeria. And then Morocco, which among this is a, supposed to be the fifth, at 4,210, 4, and we are 1,000 plus. So we actually have gone low. We're coming from a low of per capita of 3,000 plus in 2014. So we've, every other thing have headed south. You see, insecurity is worsened. Well, let's, let's, Corruption has worsened. Let, let's, Adherence to the rule of law has worsened. Hmm. The country has been at, nepotism is at the highest. Let's look at one issue that you mentioned and you came up with quite voluble statistics there, and that is the issue of the economy. The president in the clip we played earlier, um, before our interview began, made it clear that he was aware of the fact that there would be pain before gain. I mean, if you look at every economy from Argentina to all the ones that have tried to reform their economies, there's always a bit of pain before the gain comes. That, that comes with putting in reforms and fundamental reforms that would eventually lead to an improvement in the economy. What I'm curious to know is if you had become president, how difficult would it have been to govern in the current environment? Because you would have inherited essentially what President Buhari left for you to inherit. Because some have argued that whoever took over from President Buhari would have inherited a country that would have been very difficult to fix with so much borrowing and debt and corruption and the fall in you know, the, the, the currency and all the rest of it. You, yes, you could argue that the government, that was part of their, their, the, the, what they said were their reforms. But in other words, you would not have been able to turn things around and deliver in one year. Charles, the first thing you do as a leader 
who inherited a difficult situation is to lead by example and it start by your own style, by your behavior, your conduct, how you manage the resources. You cannot say that things are difficult mm. when you're living in conspicuous consumption. The things you don't do. Nigeria today is a country with the highest amount of people without homes. Over 24 million. Yet, you're spending 20 something billion to build a house for one person. Mr. Jones, are you saying that a, a vice president of Nigeria cannot live in a four bedroom house? You live in the UK. 10 Downing Street is three rooms. That is an economy that is almost 10 times our economy today. And the prime minister lives in three rooms. So that's where you start. You start by living like somebody who is coming through difficulty, who is facing difficulty, who wants to change things. That's how we do it. You don't engage in what we've been doing, buying vehicles, partying and everything, as if things are normal, when you say there's difficulty. You need to deal with the issue of cutting the cost of governance. That's where you start. So in, you need to deal with the issue of mm. massive corruption. That is showing that I am now, okay, things are bad. Just have served the system. Where I came in and found that things are bad. And we start by cutting the cost of governance. So are those, uh, is that what you'd like to see him, I mean, the first year is gone. You know, that's a fact. But he's now entering his second year. Or he has entered. What are the things that no, you, you have to see No, you have to also show a clear plan. Hmm. It is not enough to say, oh, we're going to go through problems. If we're going to go through problems, let me, just this is very simple. You enter a plane. There's a bad weather. There's going to be a turbulence. The pilot says, we're going to have, we're going to go through bad weather. It's going to take us maybe one hour, two hours, because of this. And he follows it through. <clears throat> that is not the time. In that bad weather, everybody, even the crew, are asked to sit down. That's not time to start serving food and wine and everything when everything is up and down. That's why we're there. We're in turbulence and people are still dancing and everything. I always say what happened to the Titanic is what is happening in Nigeria. While the plane was going on, the people on the upper deck were busy dancing until the whole thing collapsed. That's what is happening now. We should change and do things rightly. We can change and manage our corruption and everything and all that. Well, um, hopefully um, the people in power and in the know are listening to you. But let me move away from President Tinubu and come to, to you. Um, in terms of the candidates who will potentially challenge President Tinubu in 2027, and you certainly sound like one of them, um, and how voters rate them with regard to how fit for the job they are, um, I am quite sure that many people will say that you obviously stand out. But do you think that your public standing has grown or diminished since the 2023 election? Charles, I don't know. It's only the public that will know. Yeah, but you, mine, you, you, you interact with them. Mine is to continue interacting and being part of the process of building a new Nigeria that is possible. Because we can't go on this way. We're headed to a disaster. We must do things rightly. Like I always said, I'm not desperate to be president. I'm desperate to see Nigeria work and work for the poor people of Nigeria. Right. The system has been very uncaring for the people of Nigeria, and we must fix it. Work where we have to remove this criminalized system, corruption, that we the politicians 
have unleashed on the country and make it better. Right. Well, you said that we should go and ask the public yes. about their assessment of your public standing, whether it's grown or diminished. Well, one man who is a member of the public, in a manner of speaking, who seems to think that your standing has diminished is the Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoyinka. He recently attacked you, saying that you are unfit to govern Nigeria. What's your reaction to that? Well, quite frankly, I will not uh, make a comment on that. Wale Shoyinka is the father. I have a policy. I don't respond when my father's talk. Yeah, but he's delivered a I leave it, I leave, it, I leave it to them. Because when I became their age, I want those younger ones to respect me, though I will also try to put myself in a position that I will respect myself before that. Well, he's doing But I show you, right. I show you, uh, one of the things he made is that he, he talked about the obedience. Yeah, yeah. Me inciting them. Charles, I will never, knowingly, and I have never, knowingly or knowingly, asked any of the obedience or the young people to say anything against an elder, a priest, a pastor, an imam, and ever, never, it will never ne happen. Nevertheless, don't. never will happen. And I don't make comments when they make comments. Right. It is left for Nigerians to know whether I'm fit or not. I've been a successful businessman in the private sector. I've been in the corporate world and can say I'm one of the most successful. I've also served a state where I still challenge all those who, are my, who have served. Let's put our records side by side and let me know. And when I served, the only measure of development was Millennium Development Goals, which I started seven years after. When it ended, I was number one. Yeah, well, I'm going to come to that in a minute, but I, I just want to finish because we're going to talk about the state, um, so, how, you, how you, you were governor of Anambra State. Okay. Um, but just returning to Wale Shoinka briefly, you said you've never incited people against I him or never, anyone else. I will never do it but, to but, but does he have a point when he says that by not controlling or at least trying to control the online trolls who he says are obedient that are responsible for the insults directed at him that you are tacitly encouraging such behavior no human being on earth that i know today have controlled online trolls nobody go and see what they write about me it's even worse than what they write about him. Go and read it. You can Google it. You can see it. Well, I have seen it. Yes. Yeah, so, so if they do that against me, how do I not control? Who do I know that is doing that? It could actually be those who are his friends who claim that they are obedient, doing it in order to make him make such statements. But like I said, he remains a revered father. Okay. And I respect him. And I'll keep respecting right. him. Right. Let, let's move on from there. What about the other person who, has, who seems to have taken aim at you? And that's the former director general of your campaign organization, Doyin Okube. I mean, having supported you in 2023, he now believes that Bola Tinubu is the best of the 2023 presidential candidates. I mean, at the very least, that must hurt. What's your reaction No, to it that? doesn't hurt me. It's a personal assessment. It's just personal to him. And I, like I said, Charles, all these things that happened, I, I don't want to make comment about them because what we are talking now is the present position. Is Gary Chipa. Yeah, but that, those, those kinds of, of comments you, are damaging no. to you. I no, mean, no, no, he's no, no. saying those if, things and, if you do make and Gary, he was your If you make Gary general. or uh, yeah, 
yeah, I'm cheaper, fine with me. Right. If it's going to help in managing the whole corruption with passes, fine with me. Let's stay with the issues of the president. Whenever people are talking, this person said, Charles, I don't do politics of he said, she said. No. Let's deal with the issues. We have a problem. We have a big problem. Look at what FAO has said. That those who are going to be hungry in Nigeria have increased from 24 million to 30 something million. We have young people, look at what UNICEF released the other day. So we have bad results all over the place. That's what we should focus, not whether Peter will be fit or not. Charles, I'm fit to be a president of Nigeria. I'm competent. I can tell you that put me line by line with other people who are competing in terms of education, in terms of fitness, in terms of background. I can stand tall against them. Well, you mentioned, you talked about the state. So let me bring one more issue about these sort of personal things before we move on. Um, let's look at another person who's taken aim at you, and that's the special advisor to the governor of Anambra State, Dr. Alex Obiobolu. You, of course, governed Anambra State for eight years, and he says that in two years of Charles Saludo as governor, Mr. Saludo has achieved more than your eight years in office. In other words, two years of Saludo is better than eight years OB. What's your response? Well, uh, again, Charles, I don't like talking about issues like this. But it, because you mentioned it, let me tell you, Charles, let people go and look at my electoral promises to the people of Anambra State. Education, health, pulling people out of poverty, making sure there's access to rural areas. And I can tell you, they were the measures of MDG, and I was number one. I was number one in education. I was there in health. I was there in pulling people. Go to, go and ask those who ran Office of Poverty Alleviation, like Professor Mac, Dr. Macaul, Macaul and everything. Go and ask Sam Sudin. Go and, I was number one. What I promised, I deliver. I have to be fair. What I, I the, saw that the evidence of that online. Thank you. In terms of those, mil I think the European Union and all the rest. Everybody. Of them, their so rating I guess that I, was that and above all, was number one. Finished it and was able to even left a savings, subnational savings, for the first time in Nigeria, for future generation. Nobody had ever done it. What I promised, I delivered. My brother, my senior brother, Soludo, promised Dubai, Taiwan. So, until Anambra becomes that, because you must stick to what you promise. When Anambra is now Dubai, Taiwan, he has achieved his purpose. I didn't promise that. What I promised, I delivered. And that's what I'm thinking about, what I'm talking, when I was talking about being president, I wasn't, I was saying things that is deliverable, that I'm going to do this in the north, we're going to make sure we we'll go to the north and turn around the uncultivated land, do this. I wasn't really, I had what I wanted to do and I would have started from day one and show the direction. That's how it works. Let's turn to the other debate that's going on, on at the moment about the future of the Labour Party, because in a sense there appears to be a parallel there to the issue um, that Professor Soinka was talking about, which is the issue of non-intervention on your part. We don't seem to be hearing of you intervening to sort out what to the public appears to be very toxic divisions within the Labour Party. No, there's no toxic division within the Labour Party, that I can tell you. And I'm intervening. Charles, when fathers intervene in their family, it is not a public affair. I'm a leader in the Labour Party, and we're talking. And I assure you that whatever 
raising problem or crisis in Labour Party can, is not up to 10% of what happened in other parties. And we will resolve, resolve it. Never and do so amicably. Right. Nevertheless, there appears to be, I mean, you, you said you're doing it privately. No, we're doing that. We're yeah. doing it. But, we're, but there are a lot of people in the, the, the Labour Party who are doing theirs publicly. And, and in, 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 in that context, there appears to be an extraordinary realignment taking place within the Labour Party. At the outset, it was Mr. Papa and Mr. Arabambi and all the rest of it taking aim at Julius Abure, the chairman of the Labour Party, accusing him of forgery, fraud and all the rest of it. And now they've realigned themselves and are now publicly saying that they are working together against you and the obedient movement. What is no. actually going on no, there? That, I mean, that, it, it that suggests that the that party that in absolute tatters. In terms not, of they're you. not working against me, I can tell you. Nobody, they're not working against but, me. But that's what they said. You know, some elements try to say that. If you want to know, Whoever Labour Party is doing anything, come out and you see who they will announce as the leader. And you will see it in the coming days, mm. where we will go out in certain functions. I've never been in any function where somebody said, we're working against this man. No. Well, they, may is, not, they may not say it directly to your face, no, if <laughs> but you, they're saying it in public. No, if you, if you, it's that same thing. We're talking about people saying things that are not reality. That same thing. People can say it, but when Labour is doing something, when I appear, you will see who is the leader. Mm. Simple. Do, do you, though, intend to remain in the Labour Party, given, at least in, from the way it looks to the public, how impossibly difficult it seems to resolve the conflicts within the party? No, we don't, have that. we don't have that type of conflict you're mentioning. People are just exaggerating what is there. I'm a faithful member of Labour Party. Right. And we, like I always say... So you remain a member. I remain there. I remain there. Right. I remain there. I'm a member of Labour Party. If for any reason, like I said, if we're going to move forward right. and there's other groups that are going to work with us, we'll work with them. Right. Okay. Well, um, that brings me to the issue of possible mergers and alliances. Um, has there been some communication between you and the other leading opposition candidates, parties, about a possible merger or alliance ahead of 2027? Any deal in the offing or there hasn't been and there won't be? There's no deal. But I wish and hope there will be. We need to look for like minds who are now committed to saving this country. But are you working towards a deal? Well, like you said, we're all trying to put ourselves together right. and explore all those opportunities. So you are talking about a possible merger then? Not that we have started it, but that's what part of what we're considering. Right. But are you considering that in isolation or in no, communication? The party. With the party, everybody right. looking at it. Right. Um, so at the moment, there's nothing to report. No, 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 not, right. nothing to report. We will, of course, the people, the public will see that will go ahead. Right. But, but would you like to see a merger? I want the like minds and those who can see that we are in difficulty mm. to come together and save this country for the future of our children. Okay, well, let, let's move away from that because obviously there's nothing to report. Um, you talked about, you've talked a lot about governance on different levels. You've got the federal level, obviously the state level, local government and so on. Let, let's talk about the state level, which is a very important level. Um, I wonder whether you might be able to tell us whether there's any governor you feel, because you, you, you assessed um, President Tinubu's one year in office, 
Um, let's assess it on the state level. Is there any governor you feel has had a good first year in, in office amongst the current crop of governors? Of course, you should see Governor T what he's doing. Well, he's your Labour Party, no, no, so no, people would say you no, would say no, that. No, it's about you? the people. It's, forget about whether it's the Labour Party or not. You go to the people. Whenever I do assessment about governance, I talk to the people. Mm. I talk to the people from Abia. It is not about anything. You could see it. You got the people feel. The comments of the people. Governance, Charles, is about the people. That's why whenever you ask me questions, I say, go to the people. It's how the people feel. When you ask me about the Anambra State, I say, go to the people. Or Charles, I invite you in the Anambra State. Let me walk the streets of Anambra State. And you see how the people will talk. Everything that I know that you can use to measure government, while I was in government, the people felt it. I want the best state with road network in this country by Federal Ministry of Works that is supposed to be in opposition. So I can go on and on and tell you what we've been able to, we were able to do. So for me, it is the people of Abia that I'm listening to. And there's other governors, of course, that are doing their best. Maybe they're not in their first year, but definitely he stands out. Yeah, but what about the other governors? You said there were others. No, they were there. I'm sure. Because a lot of people will say, yes, okay, they will be able to do that. I read. These are based on what I read. Right. I used to tell people that, considering what is happening, say, in Boronu, that I see the governor, there's Zulum, trying to contain insecurity and at times take it on first hand and everything so quite frankly it's for me to assess the other states i didn't go assessing them now i'm at point where i'm going to look at what is happening in different states mm. and ask questions from the people but i don't make comment unless it's from the people right i understand that now you mentioned state capture at the beginning yes. of our chat um which is this is huge corruption. Yes, and, and, and you used the example of elections that have taken place in South Africa, Mexico, India, where the Electoral Commission is seen to be independent and has done the job that they were charged with doing. What would you do with the Electoral Commission in Nigeria? Sentin insists that they do their work independently and that democracy is what it should be. If I have the opportunity, Charles, I've served as a governor. I never interfered with any institution. Go and ask those who were in the judiciary while I was there. Not for one day did I interfere. Go and ask those who were in education, like university, not for one day. Go and ask the police, the army, all security, whether there's one day Peter will be said, go and arrest this person or do this is wrong. In fact, when I was doing my second tenor, go and ask the security people that came to meet me, INEC, DSS, police, army, they came to meet me. And I told them, all I want is let all my votes be my vote. I don't want one extra vote that is not for me. And I don't want one of mine to be... You know, Go ask anybody in my second But, but if you say that... The, it was free right. and fair. But if you say that... Said, the, I insisted. If you say that the Electoral Commission is corrupt, yes. then the possibility of them being manipulated as a result of your non-interference remains. No. And so no, people if they, would if they want, know, you, they'd want you if to they interfere know, if to they reform know, the, the that's a, if, you, if they know that you're strict and you're going to do the right thing, just like I always say about corruption, that if the number one, number two, whether governor, president decides to stop it and he's not involved, his children and family are not involved, wife are not involved, that you reduce it by over 50%. If you decide to do the right thing and order for the right thing, it will be done. So 
Is your message more confident today after the 2023 presidential election, or is that something that needs to pick up? Well, for me, it's the continuation. We'll continue to deliver the same message, insisting right. that we can't have a country that is criminalized as it is today, where I've shown you in this measure of development, our human development index is low. Our human capital is low. Our health is so low. When, so what else do you want? Right. Our poverty, we have poverty capital, is worsening. Our per capita, which you used to measure, which is number one measure, have fallen from a high of 3,000 in 2014 to 1,000 today. Things are worsening. Inflation, headed south. Interest rate. So, so it's not, I'm not trying to make it up. It's the reality. So in that context, what is your message to the people of Nigeria as they look to you and other politicians for leadership and for hope of a better future? Well, I'll start with the politicians. It is time for us to have a rethink and think about the poor people of this country. There's so many things that are going wrong. The poor people are suffering. We must now refocus and deal with issues that concern them. Shall there's so many issues that concern poor people which we don't address. I was talking to somebody earlier about Heritage Bank issue. How dare you allow a situation at this critical time, so many poor people with their little savings have put it in a bank where I'm sure whatever caused them to collapse is among the, came from the elites and possibly the top politicians. And you allow them to lose their savings. They even allow some big people and some big institutions to be able to get their money back and then allow poor people. I know a man whose entire life savings of 80 million is in that bank. He's worked all his life, he's late, his family depends on interest on that money. I know those who put money in community banks, microcredit banks, and also of saving institutions who in turn put it in microcredit heritage bank and you allow it to collapse. They don't even know where to go to. I live in the village and they're running all over the place crying. When would this country start caring for the poor? That is the problem we have here. And we must deal with it. When you see this massive corruption going on, if it's not budget padding today, it is undisclosed subsidy payment, it is inflated contracts, and all sorts of things which we should. So these are issues we need to deal with. These are issues I even want our agencies like ESCC to start dealing with. Not arresting uh, Bob Risky and Obi Kubana, or what's up, what's up, Kubana big chief priest. These are minor issues. We have things that are going wrong. Our speaker, through one of his aides, in, in April, said we are losing 300 barrels of crude every day. People like Tony Elimele have said we are losing over 50% of our production. But let's say speaker thing that was specific. 300 barrels a day, charts times 75 which is the minimum you can get today, is $22,500,000. At the rate of 1,005, it's at $3,750,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000
That's where I want our agencies who are pursuing people who are corrupt to be. Project pardon in all this area. That's where they should be. Facing it squarely, not arresting Bob Risky because he dressed like a woman and spread about maybe 500 naira. I can assure you that if you call Nigerians today and say, hey, we are going to feed only women in this hunger time, it's just, I don't know how, all men who dress like women and go and collect the food because we're hungry. Uh -huh. We will even have to dress Bob Risky. He will, he will be, he wouldn't even know where the, what is in dressing like a woman. It's not easy. The wigs are sold in the market and everything. Everybody will turn into. So these are things we need to fix right. okay. squarely. On that note, I want to thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mr. Peter B is the presidential candidate or was the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 presidential election. And of course, he joins me in the studio for the special Democracy Day chat. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Charles, for having me.